if anything was to pop off during flight, here's the easiest way for you to know whether or not it's an accident or an incident. Hey, let's go! Boom! Understanding the difference between an accident or an incident is not only invaluable information that you need to know for you to pass the oral portion of your check ride, it's also great information for you to know in your personal flight journey as a pilot because you want to understand if anything pops off how do you classify this is it classified as an accident or an incident and then most importantly when is it necessary that you immediately notify someone we're going to go over all of that in this video and after this video you're going to know exactly where to find this information how the information that you need to pass your check ride and how to be safe as a pilot let's run that thing let's go! Hey, we back off in that thing. Understanding the difference between an accident or an incident and all the other subcategories and details that go along with that thing. The most important thing when you're getting ready to learn about a lot of rules and regulations, you want to make sure you understand them, but the easiest thing to do and the best thing that you can do is understand where to locate the information. So instead of trying to remember all these details, study it, retain as much of it as you can, but the most important thing you want to remember where can I find this information? Remember, your oral portion of your check ride, it's an open book test, but the book is useless. The book actually is a liability if you don't know where anything is. So throughout your entire pilot aviation journey, you always wanna be marking up and highlighting and tabbing that for aim with various information. You always wanna have you a side notebook where you're writing down information. If you want reviews about the best tips to pass your check ride, there's a video on this channel. The best tips in passing your check ride. Link at the end of this video where them links be at. Make sure you follow that. Hey, boom! And those same rules apply to understanding the difference between an accident or an incident. You want to understand the 4 aim part 830. 830 in that thing is going to tell you everything that you need to know about an accident or an incident. Let's run that thing right now. Let's go! Boom! The first one you want to be concerned with is an accident. What exactly is an accident and how is it defined? An accident is defined within a certain time frame, and that time frame is being determined by if you board an aircraft with the intention to fly from that time that you start until the time that you disembark that aircraft, if anything pops off in some of these subcategories, it could be considered an accident. The key to that is it can happen even when the plane is not in the air technically. As long as you are aboard the aircraft with the intention to fly, that can be anything that can happen on the ground, et cetera, et cetera, until the time that you disembark and something pops off, that is considered an accident. That's one of the key things to know there. And then when you start to get under the accident category, you basically got three things you need to be concerned with. Let go! The first subcategory under accident is fatal injury. If someone dies within 30 days of an accident, it's considered a fatal injury. As you would guess, the next subcategory under an accident is serious injury. So it's not fatal, but it's still incredibly serious. That can lead to broken bones, organs, internal kind of damage, burning, second, third degree burns, more than 5% of the body. A lot of things can go into making it a serious injury. If a person is hospitalized for more than 48 hours within a seven day window after the accident, again, consider a serious kind of injury. Those are the categories that you wanna understand about an accident. You got that fatal, and then of course you have a serious injury. Boom! And lastly, under an accident, it's substantial damage. If you got substantial damage to your aircraft where it's just no longer airworthy, it's completely damaged, it's completely totaled and done with, of course, that is considered substantial damage and that is a result of the accident. And these are the subcategories that you want to concern yourself with when you get ready to explain the difference between an accident and an incident and understanding the subcategories that qualify under an accident. Let go! Boom! A quick reminder. The best way to try to remember all this information is remember where you can find it. You can find it in part 830 of your four aim. Give you a detailed description of everything you want to talk about. Instead of trying to remember 20 different things, if you can remember one thing, where to find it, you'll be in a good place. Let go! Next up, now that you know an accident and the three subcategories under an accident, now you need to know what is the difference between an accident and an incident. An incident is simply everything that's not classified as an accident. So it's easy to remember. If you start with an accident first and you understand those subcategories of fatal injury, serious injury, substantial damage, anything that doesn't qualify as part of an accident but something still happened is qualified as an incident. For example, let's just say something happened to the aircraft and it's unsafe 
for you to fly in. It doesn't qualify. No, no one died, so it doesn't qualify as fatal. It doesn't qualify as a serious kind of injury or substantial kind of damage. But the damage that was called, caused led to the fact that now the aircraft is not safe. That would be an incident. Hey, now that you understand the difference between an accident or an incident, now you need to understand when should you notify someone immediately. When you think about this information here, always think in groups of threes. When you talk about an accident, there's usually three subcategories under that. Fatal, serious, substantial damage. When you want to determine whether or not you should notify someone immediately, there's three categories under that. You should notify someone if there's an accident. You should notify them if it's a serious incident. And you should notify someone immediately if there's an overdue aircraft. An accident, you already understand exactly what that is. We just went over that. If any of that pops off, you should immediately notify someone. But what exactly is a serious incident? Something that didn't lead to any of the accident information, but you still requires you to kind of notify someone immediately. Let's just say there was a major problem with the flight controls in flight. Let's just say all of a sudden, maybe you or someone else, the pilot or one of your crew members became incredibly ill due to something in flight. Obviously, those are serious kind of incidents that could have led to this Maybe it didn't at that particular time, so it doesn't qualify as an accident, but it's still a serious enough incident where it requires immediate notification. Another example would be an in-flight fire. Obviously, that's a serious enough incident that will require immediate notification. There's also a laundry list of others that fall into that serious incident category. Go to your 4 aim port 830. If you don't remember anything else from this video, remember where you can find the difference between an accident or an incident and everything that falls into that category. 4 aim port 830. Hey, boom! Now, finally, understanding what exactly is immediate notification. How is it defined? It's defined by meaning expeditiously. Expeditiously, you need to get at them and let them know what's going on, what didn't popped off, whether it's an accident or an incident. Now, you want to do that by any means that you feel is the most expeditious way. Phone call, email, however you want to formally make that immediate notification. And you want to do it within a certain time frame. If it's an accident, you want immediate notification on that accident within 10 days of it popping off. So within 10 days of everything popping off, you want to let them know. If you're involved in any kind of overdue aircraft that was involved in anything, an accident or whatever it may be, you want to notify them within seven days of you being aware of the situation. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. The serious incident, both the accident, whether it's the accident or the overdue aircraft, without request, remember, they don't have to get at you. You have to get at them. You understand the situation, you know what popped off, you need to immediately notify them. The serious incident, you only have to notify them if they ask you to. If they ask you to notify us and let us know detail what popped off, what happened. Then you're required to give them immediate notification after they done reached out to you. So the accident and the overdue aircraft, you immediately reach out to them. The serious incident, they're going to contact you first. And then, of course, you reciprocate and let them know what's popping off. Let go! Boom! And one of the most important things you want to be aware of if you're ever unfortunately involved in an accident is you want to make sure you do everything you can to preserve the wreckage. You don't want to be tampering with anything. Obviously, you want to do everything you can to get yourself and any people that are inside the airplane with you to safety. But after you've done that, then if you secure yourself and secure others and everyone is safe, then you want to make sure you do everything you can to preserve the wreckage. Think about it like a crime scene. You don't want to be tampering with anything. You want to leave everything as is until, of course, everyone arrives and things can be dealt with in the proper way. Boom! I hope that you enjoy many, many years Years of safe flying without any accidents or incidents but you can use a lot of this information as you observe the world of aviation and start to read articles and see things and understanding yourself and ask yourself do you think that that was an accident or an incident based on what happened do you feel that they had to immediately notify someone so you can start to just review everything that happens in the world of aviation and how you would have handled it if you were in that situation that is how you can use this information and that's how it's invaluable to you to not only pass your check ride but to use it throughout your aviation journey let up don't forget to like this video comment on this video share this video and subscribe to this channel i am donovan batiste and this this is leadership mindset a place where you can come for free and fun information about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot because i want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing Love you one time. Subscribe to this channel. Hey.